ancient tradition of the SCA by opening my mouth, humble story with <laughs> no shit. There yeah, I was. <laughs> now, I will. I will also add another little, another little beginning to this, which is. I'm never gonna fly to another freaking war again. <laughs> so, it's a stray war. I've flown in and I am ready, revved up to do the crystal flute challenge and get myself a crystal flute once and for all. And last year, I knew where the crystal flute competition was, and so I said, ah, I will head right there and get there early. And look, Odyssey Coffee is just a mere camping block away, fill my mug with Odyssey's wonderful coffee so I can stay up late and guard well into the night. And I wandered over to where the camp had been, <laughs> and I said, is the crystal food competition here, hopefully, though I did not see anything that looked like it would be a crystal food competition, and they said, what is that? <laughs> and I said, well, it's being held in the barony of, I forgot the name of the barony. Oh no! <laughs> it's okay. Uh, the barony that is Tucson, Arizona. I will think of it eventually. And where are they this year? I think they're down that way. So. <laughs> Fine. And so, like some Diogenes of Bardic, I wandered from camp to camp. <laughs> Crystal flute competition. Barony to be named later. <laughs> and the answers got worse as I headed in the direction to which they had pointed. Like, who is this Barony? What are you talking about? And I thought to myself, aha! This is the kingdom of Aitenveld, and they are a barony there. I will go to the kingdom in Campit. Surely they will know. Well, apparently, anyone that knew anything about anything in the kingdom that was responsible for that encampment had fled off into the Astraea night by that point and left the children to guard the fires. And people went, what barony are you talking about? <laughs> and I knew that that was a bad sign. <laughs> and so my struggles continued, my coffee draining near to its end as I went along. And somebody said, wait, I'm from there. Triscuthier, thank God. I'm from Triscuthier, but I don't think there's a party competition going on in the camp tonight. We're having a big old cookout. Well, uh, let's go that way anyway, just in case. And we head back along the back side of their encampment. Now, what I did not know is there are some outcroppings of rocks, this being Arizona in the desert, you know, the Australia oh, no. Mountains. And there's an entire empty area that you can't camp in, and then camping yonder. And they were heading off, dragging children along, and so very slowly, in this direction. And I saw the, like, lack of encampment, and went, what is that, like, trailer parking? Um, I'm going to check around here some more. Thanks, you know, you said that the competition wasn't going to be there, blah, blah. So eventually, somebody knows where, about the party, and, or the competition, and where Triscuitier is. And they tell me it's out on the road out to the showers in the back. And I'm like, okay, I know where the showers are, I will hit them. The thing about Australia War, or the Australia Park, is that it's in a big oval. And the roadways drive you around in this oval. And what I did not know is you need to go out and around to get to the showers. And I headed straight at them. And the oval took over, and I'm wandering around and wandering around, and we're camped on the other side of the board, and I can tell that that's Calentier in the distance. Yes, that's how far I had to go in this 6,000 person board. And <laughs> I said, well, at least I know how to get to the showers from here. And I went out the side road on our side and went around to the showers, and sure enough, there was just no road back in, so I'm like, all right, it's symmetrical. There's got to be a road on the other side from where I usually go because it's their side of the camp. Great. I will make it all the way around there <laughs> in the dark, alone, walking on slightly, walking along the street. And there 
is a gigantic encampment with people all over the place and spilling off into the trail that I'm coming back into the regular encampments with. And I approach somebody who's at the edge of this and go, do you know where the barony of Triscothir is? And he goes, nope. How about the crystal flute bardic competition? Nope. But I'll ask somebody from here. And he, excuse me, miss, you're from here. Milady, do you know where Triscothir is? And she spreads her arms wide proudly and says, all this is Triscothir. And do you know, I said jumping in, where the Crystal Flute Bardic Competition is? Why, yes, it's in the Baronial Encampment. Where you see the Baron of Triscothir, Baron of Baroness of Triscothir and their folk had a separate, smaller, quieter encampment away from the hubbub of the great uh, hot dog feast that they were having. And so I made my way there, and as I get to the competition, I look out, and I see the blank space that, oh, 20 minutes before, I could have walked across to get here. Just then, they're going to start the competition. I've delayed it for a while. I know people had a hard time getting here. I'm sorry if I didn't give good directions on getting here. I'm like, look for the directions. And I'm sure it took you a little while to get here. You have no idea, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then he makes this other small announcement that I didn't think would necessarily have anything to do with me. My dog ate the box that the crystal flute came in. <clears throat> and all I have is this little bit of foam to try to cushion. But I have the crystal flute. <gasps> Somehow it survived. <laughs> and I thought to myself, yeah, it's going to be my luck. I'm going to win this stupid competition and break the flute before I came home. I did not know that at that moment I was given the gift of prophecy. <laughs> oh, no. Having won the competition, I, I thanked him. He said, we will replace the flute if something terrible happens on the way home. Boy, am I glad I got that guarantee. <laughs> and, and so I took my precious crystal flute and I took it to my little dome tent. Because, you know, I flew. And I didn't want to burden my friends with like, a ton of candles. And I put it in the corner and tried to make that a safe zone. Then the next day, my big old heavy crossbow was laying right across it, and I'm like, ah, this is not a safe place for the sacred crystal food. I will put it over here on this quiet. My heavy combat -y boots, because it was kind of muddy that year that I had had to wear, are right next to the crystal food, having been flung there. Ah, okay, that's it. It's the last day anyway. I'm going to take down camp. There are these really grody, Thingies, barbecue stuff with caked on. Didn't matter. Put a towel that I'll never use again over it. Put my crystal food on that and surrounded it with everything I owned that was going home. And I thought to myself, how, how can the crystal food return home? Well, I know. I will put it in my arrow box. I will put it in my arrow box and I have this soft cloth. I will wrap it in this soft cloth and festoon it geometrically stabilized, gyroscopic between the arrows. It will touch the sides, it will be cushioned, it will be perfect. And off it went on the flight home, uh, or on the drive home, while I flew back. And where should I get my crystal flute? Why, it's in my arrow box. The perfect place for my friend to bring my arrow box would be archery practice. Archery practice on the broken gravel driveway. Outside the archery practice is where we will make this exchange. And I took my band for some stupid reason. <laughs> with the really hard to open door. And and there I am, and I'm anxious to go get my crystal flute. My lovely wife, Ketia, had provided a nice box for the flute to come home in, and I put it for again some stupid reason in the very back of this stupid van. And and I jumped out to see if my crystal flute was safe, not getting the box out first. And rushed over, and there it was, safe and sound, in its softly wrapped cushioned spot. And I took the softly wrapped cushion and the flute, and I took it with me, and I go over, and I, and I open the heart to open the door. Now there's a thing about having a glass flute in a padded holding. There's no friction. You can't really apply good pressure to it. Yes, I felt it go. I tried to get it. I call this story the shattered remains of my major award. 
<laughs> Luckily, the person who ran the competition after hearing my story said, no, no, it didn't technically get home with you. I will order you another one. And I'm like, oh, oh, do you have to go through such expensive? Like, they're not, he's like, they're not really that expensive. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so Master Thomas is an awesome fella. And he ha I had decided at that moment, since he was so gracious, I would honor his request. He said, it's so seldom, almost never, does anyone come back and do what I want, which is to play something on the crystal flute that they want. My hope is to bridge the gap between instrumental and voice. And, because it's a voice competition. And so I came back, and I played for him six notes that I managed to figure out on the flute. And they are... Dun, 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 dun. It's a small musical inter interlude that it may be teasing the side of your mind right now. Something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover. Something in the way she moves me, I don't want to leave her now. You know I believe in how. Dun, 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 dun. So I played for him something. Ha <laughs> <laughs>